this topic, my fiance doesn't want to have intercourse. I'm not going to tell you whether this is a man writing in or a woman writing in. I'm just going to take a look at this whole thing from both sides because there's a really important message here that I want to convey to you that kind of supersedes the actual question. So bear with me. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation, been doing this for over 20 years, and I think I can really help you. With our principles, we've helped a lot of people see marriage in a much healthier way, including engagement and courting. So subscribe to this channel because there's so much that you're going to learn and you need to learn. Now, let's talk about intercourse. And I know it's not addressing the actual question right away. I promise I will. But this is too important. And while I have your attention, it's really important to you, man or woman. So what has happened in our world, you might say, is that there has been this thinking about sex that is so far from real and yet it's been embraced by virtually everyone. That thinking in a nutshell is that sex is for entertainment. Sex is for relief. Sex is for sharing moments which is getting closer but we don't distinguish human in intercourse from animal intercourse. We even talk about how animals have pleasure too. Well, not all of them. Very rare, in fact, in the animal kingdom, but human beings are very special. We are different. We are not an evolved species in terms of evolutionarily we are not like the next step there is no missing link yes we are a special creation and the proof of that is on our consciousness i'm not going to turn this into a religious talk that's not where i'm going but i want you to understand what you get married for so you can put intercourse in its proper place and you can then decide between the two of you when you should have intercourse but let's take a look at what intercourse is between animals purely instinctive purely even from the point of view of the few studies that they have where they show that some dolphins do it for pleasure and other animals do it for pleasure. It's instinctive. There is within every living organism the drive to survive. You know about this from your earliest science classes. We know that it is the definition of life itself is that there is a drive to survive and it's sub drive to propagate. Why? Because any organism fares better when there's a group of similar organisms. So this is nature's way of taking care of a particular individual and a particular species. It's this drive to survive. And the way it manifests, this drive to pro propagate, it manifests in a desire to have sex, to have intercourse. And this is within us too, because we are human beings. We are essentially spiritual beings. We're souls who have a body and have a mind. But having a body means that we have to deal with the body's demands. You know, imagine that we are pure spirit, that we don't have a body. Well, if we didn't have a body, we wouldn't need air to breathe. We wouldn't need food to eat. But we are instinctively drawn to taking care of our bodies in this way. We get very upset if someone tries cutting off our air supply 
Yeah, and I don't know about you, I get really upset if someone tries cutting off my food supply. We have to have these things. It is instinctive, and it's not driven by you, the soul. It's driven by your body. Not you, the body, but your body. Also, is the same drive to procreate. This is the drive where you want to have sex, where you want to have intercourse. Unfortunately, what happens is we have, by virtue of training, you might say, from Hollywood novels and not high, not particularly high thinkers, we have made sex into something that it's a gotta have. And instead of going, well, it's a gotta have because our bodies are demanding it, it's a gotta have because, and we come up with all these excuses. We don't actually gotta have sex. But that drive to survive, that drive to propagate, to procreate, is telling us we do. And so because we have a very sophisticated mind, and probably a very moral mind, if you're asking this question, the drive is getting the mind to come up with reasons to have sex because. And you could come up with a thousand reasons. I'm sure you already have. But let me tell you a secret about intercourse. It shouldn't be a secret, but it is. And the you might call them the statutes of morality tell us not to have sex out of wedlock, but they don't tell us why. They tell us in terms that are only morality-based. I say only morality-based, but it's not an only because they're good guardrails, but I'm going to explain to you why it's important to wait until you have this absolutely solid commitment of marriage. Whether you get married before or after you have the intercourse, it's up to you guys. If the commitment is there and both of you are in tune with this, that allows... Okay, let me back up a little. Men, <laughs> by virtue of nature, are designed very differently from women. Men are designed, their bodies, not their hearts, not them as souls. As a soul, you're a soul. But when you have a male body, you are driven by the body, not that you have to listen to it, and you shouldn't. I mean, you really shouldn't. But you are driven by the body to have as many mates as you can. If we were not evolved as human beings, then we would be like bears or dogs or other higher animals and we would get the scent and we would want to have sex and the only thing that would prevent us would be other males that also want to fertilize the egg that is ready in the female. But we're not animals. As souls, we have to respect that women who also have this body that is also driving them to have sex is driving them to have sex primarily so that they can raise children. They're not looking for the fun of sex. They are utilizing sex as human beings to attract the right man and then to give him sex when he craves it but then to be very loyal to that man make him the only one she if she has this idea an ideal in her mind that he is the only man who will ever touch her in this way. 
then what she is able to do as a soul who has a body is use her body completely to express her love. And I'm telling you, that is a whole new world. If she feels that she is stepping over that line and it's an individual thing, then there is a part of her that is going to close off her heart. And men get married, human men get married, not for the sex, not for the cooking, not for the companionship or to have children, but to have that connection with their wife's heart. Because a man doesn't have that natural connection to his heart the way a woman does. Nature had to open a woman's heart because she's going to have the burden of raising children, which are a pain in the butt. I love them. I've got them, a bunch of them. But they are. They're hard work. And so what nature did was it gave woman this advantage where her heart opens up. A man is the warrior. He's there to defend his little family, to protect his children, to protect his wife, whose children they actually are. Please don't write in about this because, yes, they're your children, too if you're a man listening to this. But by nature's design, they're mostly the woman's. So intercourse before you're married, because in this particular topic, the word fiance was used. It doesn't matter whether you wait or not to me but you need to understand that if it matters to your fiancé wife, fiancé wife-to-be, then it should matter to you. You should learn how to take advantage of this unique opportunity called marriage because it's so powerful when you're doing everything correctly, when you put your wife on a pedestal, when you don't want sex for the sake of release or for the sake of entertainment or for the sake of whatever you want to call it, but you utilize intercourse only for the purpose, primarily, instead of only, primarily for the purpose of connecting your hearts because it is the most how shall I say this? Physically, it's the most closeness you will experience. Right? It's not holding hands. It's not kissing. It's connecting. And if you're just focused down in the genitals, you're missing the whole thing. It gives you an opportunity to have the metaphysical experience of love, the spiritual experience of love, by using your body to do so, instead of just going along for the ride, which is what most people in the world do. What I'm sharing with you is really cool stuff. No one else is talking about this. They don't know. They don't understand how it all ties together. You really should not just subscribe to this channel, but go to our website, Premarital Education, and we're moving that over to the Marriage Foundation and get the courses that we have, the premarital courses, so you could learn how to get the most out of your marriage. Because your marriage should be producing the most amazing feelings of most amazing experiences of love and you should be happier every single day of your lives. Who else is going to tell you that? And it's the truth. 
but most people are so caught up in the material realm. They think of getting a house right away, a new car, making plenty of money, and they miss this opportunity of real soul connection. You're soulmates, right? And I don't want you to miss out on that. So I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. We're here to help you. And I know I didn't answer your question because it's not my right to answer that question. This is a question the two of you need to discuss and both of you should be open-minded, but the criteria should be really solid commitment and you should really and a lot of women make the mistake of using sex to control their husbands nothing could be worse a woman should please her husband sexually whenever he wants or even if he hasn't thought of it she should transcend the moodiness and the emotions and all of that garbage and use it to connect let your husband know that he's the only one demonstrate it to him all the time all the time you'll find the balance in your marriage of when you should be having sex and when you shouldn't be and all of that it'll come but don't withhold don't force anyone's hand men don't push your wife make it a harmonious loving event oh what a great topic isn't it like this video, leave a comment, leave a question. Um, we're here for you at the Marriage Foundation. Go to our website, themarriagefoundation.org. God bless and take care.